Hallelujah. Good morning to everyone. Hello. Welcome to our uh, Hope Church live stream on this Pentecost uh, Sunday. As you see me, I'm wearing a mask. Well, that would, uh, that, that, that tells you that I'm not afraid of uh, wearing a mask. So here, here we are. Um, but at the same time, when I go to preach, I will be taking or um, so that I, you'll be able to hear me clearly. So maybe I'm maintaining a social distance here. So let me take my mask off as we move further. Uh, just to say that I will be wearing in the public, and uh, but when I come up to share, I will be taking it off. Well, with that, now I can uh, freely talk to you all. Uh, today we are going live stream from uh, Hope Church uh, Sanctuary, and uh, we want to thank uh, Cyril and uh, and Ron. Uh, they have worked so very hard to get the Wi-Fi in the building uh, uh, up to speed. And also, we'll be having John today uh, in, on the keyboard to lead us in worship. And uh, so we are we're slowly getting back into or regathering our uh, services. Uh, but for now, today and also next Sunday, we will be uh, coming through live streaming uh, but even when we regather as a church, we will continue to live stream so that we'll give that option for those who may not be able to come or will be able to still uh, follow us. And because we, are, we, we created a, a beautiful community uh, um, online these days. We have friends joining us from Sweden, from Holland, from um, Florida, from India, even now... There's a place called uh, Nagaland in the northern part of, uh, northeastern part of India. But from all over, we are gathering and having some this fellowship. So we just want to keep that going. Um, so we have set up a time where we can uh, safely reopen on June 14th. You know what? I am longing for that time where we can come together, worship the Lord together. Uh, it's been so long. You know. But let me also encourage you this way. Uh, it's not that for the last 12, 11 weeks or so we stopped being the church. Amen? We've always been the church because you, the church could never be closed, can never be canceled. Uh, the Lord said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Because of the situation, the uh, coronavirus is still there. We want to be careful. Uh, so we want to make all the take care of all the protocols that we need to take care of uh, as we slowly uh, prepare ourselves to reopen. So uh, uh, wait for our announcements. You'll be getting through our emails or Facebook or through website. So June 14th is the tentative date that we put it out there. Uh, and we'll keep following the, uh, monitoring the, the news uh, 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 the government uh, puts out there. So with that, I'd like us to... Um, Spend some time in prayer. Uh, well, before I even go there, let me also uh, announce, uh, make this announcement that uh, after our service, we'll be having a Zoom social at 11.30. Uh, I hope you will join uh, that as well. Um, so just before I lead us in time of prayer, why don't you take a moment, if you are there, uh, commenting and just greet one another. Uh, and so you're happy to connect with your friends. Um, so. Uh, take a moment to uh, say hello to someone maybe you haven't said uh, in a long time. So uh, let me give you that one second. Well, it's, uh, it's been good for us for the last uh, uh, 12 weeks. You've been so gracious, so patient with us uh, in following uh, through live streams, um, our services. Uh, before we go into prayer, um, I'm really burdened with uh, what's going on all around us these days. 
uh, especially in the last couple of uh, days, a week, weeks, we've been following in the news uh, what's happening um, in several parts of the country uh, due to the, uh, the death of uh, uh, George, George Floyd. Um, and uh, a lot of tension is going around and a lot of unrest. Uh, maybe sometimes that is not uh, fully uh, unneeded. Maybe that's not the kind of response that we need. Uh, but nevertheless, God wants justice to, to prevail because he's God of justice. Uh, how does God view justice? What, what he would like to see happen on this earth? We are living in a broken world. Uh, but uh, the, in the ideal world, when God establishes his kingdom, he wants justice uh, on the earth. So this is God's view of justice. Let me read for us from Amos 5, 24, 23. Uh, God was addressing the nation of Israel that he was not so pleased with their sacrifices and the religious festivals that they were all doing. So he tells them, away with your noisy hymns of praise. I will not listen to the music of your harps. Instead, I want to see a mighty flood of justice, an endless river of righteous living. That is God's desire. That's what God wants to see happen on the earth. And God, what does God require of his people? Us, the church, or people to, to, in general, on the earth, what do we are to do? What should be our response? That is found in the uh, book of uh, Proverbs uh, 31, verse 8. This is what the response of people in general whenever they see injustice. What, what should they do? Proverbs 31, verse 8 and 9. Uh, let me give you a moment to turn there. Proverbs 31, verse 8 and 9. Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves. Ensure justice for those being crushed. Yes, speak up for the poor and helpless and see that they get justice. Here, this, on this unfortunate situation, George Floyd has been literally crushed to his death. And we want justice. Maybe not the way that we expect, but God... In God's way, God wants justice, so he will bring justice uh, uh, on this situ in these situations. So would you join with me as we pray for uh, uh, the unrest that is going on in our country? Uh, not to mention, this, uh, we're still living in this pandemic world over. Coronavirus is still taking too many lives, and uh, we are saying to God, please have mercy, Lord, and stop this plague. No more, Lord. We don't want to see this any further. So we want this to be stopped. So would you join with me as I rally these things and the other needs among us, those who are sick, who are, are suffering with uh, cancer or uh, uh, other sickness, or uh, so those who are discouraged and depressed. So let's spend a moment, maybe wherever you are, release yourself, just pray, and God to uh, pray for God to uh, touch uh, uh, his people today. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God. We gathered in your name because, Lord, we cannot run away from your presence. Here we are uh, under your presence, Lord God. Your eyes are watching over uh, throughout the earth, Lord, uh, to strengthen those whose hearts are committed to you. So we're looking to you, Lord, for your grace and for your strength. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray for the unrest that is going on in our country right now as a result of this uh, um, um, unfortunate uh, uh, demise, the death of George Floyd. Lord, we pray for your justice to prevail. Uh, Lord, you um, uh, bring justice. We pray for uh, comfort of the uh, family uh, of uh, George, Lord, and uh, uh, those who have been affected by it. And we also pray for the, the police officers there, Lord, uh, those who are involved in this and their families. We pray for your protection upon their lives as well uh, and comfort and Lord to all those who are affected Lord so God I pray that you would give wisdom to our leaders 
to uh, lead us in a right way uh, during this time of crisis. At another crisis, in the midst of a larger crisis, we have another one right now, Lord, uh, with this situation. So we pray that uh, the, uh, the anger will not flare up, the, the, the rage will not uh, be uncontrolled. Uh, Lord, we pray for peace, uh, for calmness to prevail uh, throughout our country, Lord God. Uh, and uh, the enemy will not have the, uh, the last uh, word in this, but you, Jesus, you are sovereign. You are Lord of our nation and Lord of all the earth. So, Lord God, we give you praise. Oh, God, we pray that, Lord, this coronavirus will, will, will be stopped, Lord. Uh, 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 vaccination will be dis uh, uh, discovered uh, um, sooner than later. God, we mourn and grieve uh, with all the lives that have been lost with the families of those who've lost their loved ones in thousands and thousands, Lord, around the world. Even in our own country, Lord God, over 100,000 lives have been lost. So, Lord, we, we pray for comfort for uh, uh, every home that is experiencing or every friend who knows someone who uh, he, he or she is lost, Lord. So we just pray for your comfort on today, today, Lord. Lord, we pray for your healing for those who are sick among us. And Lord, especially we pray today on this day of Pentecost, let the Spirit of God fall upon us, Lord God, upon this earth like never before, Lord, like rushing wind, Lord. Come, Lord, set us on fire so that we might live for you, for your glory. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 We're going to sing this song. Very familiar. Very familiar. John will be leading us. Uh, 10,000 reasons. Uh, do you have a reason to praise God today? Hmm. You might be wondering, hmm, what would I think about? Well, if you're just thinking about what you need to think about, that's the very reason why you should be praising God. Because your mind is working, you are there. So as we sing together, let's give praise to the Lord. 10,000 reasons to sing. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Thank you, Pastor. I know it's awful lonely down here today without the rest of the worship team, but I can actually feel their presence. I can feel the presence of many people who watch you. Lord, thank you for that.
earth is failing The end draws near and my time has come I'll still my soul with your praise unending Praise Jesus Ten thousand reasons forever Thank you, Lord. That was a beautiful, beautiful song of thanksgiving to the Lord and just blessing the Lord uh, with all our souls. You know, there's a particular chorus towards the end. It says, when my strength is failing and the end draws near and my time has come, still my soul will sing your praise unending. 10,000 years. When we get into heaven, that's what we will be singing Praises to the Lord are never ending. Oh, let's get used to people that we will be uh, uh, joining in the heavenly choir, singing praises to the Lord. Father, we thank you. Now, Lord, as we look into your word today, may your spirit will speak to us. We open up our hearts. Lord, as the word comes, Lord, it will accomplish for, for the very purpose it is being sent out right now. So here we are, Lord, speak to us. In Jesus' precious name we pray. All God's people said, Amen, Amen. The town atheist was uh, not a bad man. He just didn't believe it. Uh, he was not uh, interested in the church. Uh, there was only one church uh, in that area and it was a cold and dead social club where no decisions were being made. One day the church building caught on fire and the whole town ran to, uh, uh, you know, to help extinguish the flames, uh, including the town atheist. Someone hollered out, hey, this is the first time I've ever seen you running to church. He shouted back, uh, this is the first time I've ever seen the church on fire. Well, isn't that uh, uh, something? Some, it's a hilarious one. But you know, what, did it, what would it take to see the church on fire? Well, I'm not talking about little fire. You know, it, it won't take much to see that one. But I'm talking about be on fire for the Lord, uh, a church people. In, in America... Today, there are so many so-called uh, lukewarm and dead Christians who are filling the church of the living God, uh, not only here, but in our world today. The fire for the Lord and for the lost has been, seems to be dying off in the, our churches. For several years, if you look at the, the numbers that would tell us here, the church attendance in the USA and in the West, he's been uh, gradually declining. And many Christians are not actively participating their faith in, uh, in public by taking a firm stand for Christ. And then came COVID-19. Then what happened? The church literally went underground or uh, literally uh, closed down their buildings and, uh, and many have been forced uh, to uh, cancel out their services and then uh, uh, just stayed in their homes. Well, as I said, can actually we can we actually cancel or close down the Church of Jesus Christ? No, it no, it it cannot. It's been it's been twelve weeks or eleven weeks. We've been haven't been gathering together. 
But it doesn't mean that we have, we've stopped being a church. We've been connecting with one another. We are praying for one another through uh, uh, texting or emailing and, and all that. But I realize a real danger, a possible real danger, when, when you're not able to gather and have this uh, uh, in-person gathering, worship services, fellowship with the fellow believers, it's highly possible some people would lose their faith in God, in Christ. And, um, uh, and the fire that they had once uh, for God and others may be flickering out. Now, my question to us is, how can we regain our first love for God and be on fire for the Lord in the post-COVID-19? Because we are looking forward into what it's going to be like. Now, how can believers keep their lamps burning bright, burning for the, for the bridegroom when, when he returns? What would it take to make a lukewarm Christian fired up for Christ? Now, how would, how would uh, 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 who would energize a bunch of fearful and, and uh, laid-back Christians to become bold and powerful witnesses for the Lord? What would it take for Hope Church when we move forward and uh, into post-COVID uh, uh, era to be more effective for the Lord? Well, this Sunday, we will look at some of these the events that are unfolding during the festival of harvest in Acts chapter 2. So follow with me into Acts chapter 2 and see what happened there. Perhaps we might find some answers for these questions that we are talking about. Acts chapter 2. We'll be uh, looking into it as we go on. Let me give some introductory uh, remarks here about festivals, about uh, holidays. In, in America, we celebrate special holidays such as Christmas and Easter, or New Year's, or Valentine's Day, uh, Mother's Day, and Father's Day. Is Father's Day still to come? I think, it, yes, it is still to come because I haven't got any uh, wishes. So it'll be on the way. So, and uh, Memorial Day is come and gone. Fourth of July, our uh, Veterans Day, uh, and Thanksgiving, right? So many. But there's nothing wrong with celebrating these festivals. However, they are American cultural holidays, not necessarily Christian. Well, is there a festival that, or a high holiday that both the Jews and the Christians can celebrate? Both Jews and Christians can celebrate. Well, yes, there is. There is one festival that is called Pentecost. Hmm, Pentecost. Well, for Baptists in particular, when the mere mention of the word Pentecost makes us so uneasy. You know, we think it is only meant for those crazy crazy uh, Pentecostals and you know, holy rollers and uh, we are decent people. That's not for us. Well, I tell you, this is one festival that can be celebrated with joy both by Jews and Christians, all Christians alike. Now, let me explain why. I want to talk about the significance of the festival of Pentecost. Well, we can trace its origin in the Old Testament. Uh, the Jewish religious calendar centered on several annual feasts. Uh, one of them was the festival of Shavuot, or weeks. The name Shavuot comes from Exodus 34, verse 22. Uh, let me put that, uh, or give you a pause to move there. Exodus 34, 22. It says, you must celebrate the festival of harvest with the first crop of the wheat harvest and celebrate the festival of the final harvest at the end of the harvest season. So the Shavuot, uh, the festival of weeks, which was celebrated by Jewish community, later called the festival of Pentecost. Uh, um, and, 
and, and then uh, it's, the, its primary, uh, what should I say, primary uh, reasons was agricultural. That was the, the way it was, uh, they were celebrated. Uh, uh, Shavuot later came to be understood as commemorating the giving of the Torah to Moses on Mount Sinai. So now it is in that framework we want to understand the events that have happened in the book of Acts. So what was going on? I want you to uh, um, come with me into the journey. It was the time where Jesus was crucified and he was buried and he was uh, resurrected and then he also ascended into heaven. All those things have happened. Now the city of Jerusalem was gripped with a lot of tension, fear and anxiety. The disciples of Christ were kind of, they were uh, anticipating or rather if a sensing that there was going to be persecution. So they, out of fear, they have stopped gathering in the publicly, openly in the temple and instead they went into seclusion. So 50 days gone, now this is the time for the festival of Pentecost. So as the tradition uh, uh, um, commanded them, that, that they, uh, as one of the commands of the Lord, the Jew, Jews from all over the world, uh, at that point, they gathered to, into Jerusalem to celebrate Pentecost. Now on that day, something spectacular happened that has changed the entire history uh, of humankind after that point onwards. Here, there were a group of 120 believers, uh, disciples of Christ. They had been meeting in, in an upper room, uh, and they were earnestly seeking and praying and waiting for the gift. It says, for the gift that was promised to them. You know, when you know that there was some gift coming, uh, someone is, well, a, a, a gift coming on your way, you would wait for it, won't you? Every day you will walk, go and see if the post box and if there's any parcel at the, you know. But, you know, but that's the kind of anticipation. They was waiting for a gift that God was going to send to them. And uh, so uh, we've, let's figure that, uh, let's find that, uh, uh, this verse is from Acts second chapter. If you turn with me to now uh, Acts uh, second chapter verses one to four, I'd like you to uh, follow me as we read through this. Act 2nd chapter verse 1 to 4. Let me give you a moment. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. Several things are happening in these verses. Uh, I'm asking this question these days. When you read this passage, I want you to imagine what's going on. And let the Lord open your eyes. You might see some things that are happening. Uh, let's pick up some of these things that are happening. Uh, as I look at, this is what I am finding out from these verses. We see here the group of believers are united. They were gathered together in one place. I see also the, they were praying. And I see there was a supernatural manifestation from heaven, there was a, a wind, a rushing wind, like a, like a storm. All of a sudden, shh, it flooded through that, that, the place where they were, they were uh, gathering. Then, uh, what else I see? Here, what, 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 what this wind, what does it represent? The wind often represents the Holy Spirit in the, in the scriptures, if you read it. And then we see... Not fire, but something like fire. It's a symbolism. A something like fire kind of was landing, tongues of fire. It's flames or tongues of fire on each of them. Now, what does fire 
represent in the body in the in the bible it is the presence of god remember moses when he had this encounter uh, in the burning bush remember that story what did he see it was the presence of god so fire symbolizes the presence of god so in other words what's happening is on the group of believers there god's presence is being manifested the holy spirit is coming down upon them and more importantly this is what i want us to notice these 120 galilean believers or maybe we should we say the uh, 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 the the american believers who only know how to speak american nothing but that American, right? These people began to speak all kinds of languages. That's what it says. They were speaking in all kinds of languages, it, though they were just Galileans. They began to proclaim the wonders of God in languages that were not familiar to them, but were very familiar to those who were listening. People came from all parts of the world that they were being uh, 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 listened to, spoken by this group of people. And some of them were surprised. What is this? These guys are speaking all kinds of uh, the language that I understand. What's going on? That was, they were amazed and they were surprised about this phenomenon. And, and they want to know, what can this mean? But there are skeptics. They're always, when God is doing some wonderful work, there are always skeptics out there to criticize. Uh-uh-uh, this is not God's work. Uh-uh, this is not uh, God who's work at work. And they simply said, oh, these guys are just drunk. They went to uh, a liquor store and, then, and they got drunk. But you know, that's not the case here. What's happening here is a promise, a prophecy of God was spoken by uh, a prophet named Joel way back in the centuries is just being unfolded for the very first time uh, uh, in front of uh, uh, the, that group of people. So that's, the, that's what Peter began to explain uh, when he, he wanted to give some answers to this crowd. So he steps up and then he talks from, uh, from let's say, from verse 17. Uh, this is what we want to focus on right now. Uh, the theme here is, I will pour out my spirit. We looked at this, the, the significance of this festival, Pentecost. Now let's look at this promise of God saying, I will pour out my spirit. Now until that time, the disciples were in hiding for fear of the Jews and Romans. Now it was the time for them to come out boldly from their isolation and seclusion. And the Apostle Peter, who himself was a, a coward at one point, remember, he denied Christ three times and for which he, he, he repented and uh, God uh, uh, reinstated uh, re him back to his uh, position of being the uh, disciple there. But now here, he stands up as bold as a lion. And he reminds the crowd about an ancient prophecy of the prophet Joel and its fulfillment. Now let's look at that. Acts 2nd chapter 17, uh, to, uh, 2nd chapter from 17 to 21. Let me read that out for us. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. In those days, I will pour out my spirit, even my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. And I will cause wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and clouds of smoke. The sun will become dark and the moon will turn blood. Blood red before that great and glorious day of the Lord arrives. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Here, why God was doing this? He's, he's been speaking through prophet Joel from every generation. 
that he was going he was preparing for uh, uh, for his mighty outpouring of the holy spirit and he was waiting for that is the opportune time and now this was the time it says in the last days now the the last days uh, uh, when we look at here the last days um, we we're talking about the time when jesus has come into this earth so here uh, peter is kind of speaking from that that prophecy and then he gives out um, uh, all these clues about how christ was uh, uh, suffered and died according to the will of the will of god and then here uh, uh, after he was giving the message uh then he will uh, uh the, the crowd there so many, many people were there they began to ask it says they were cut in in their spirit and said what must we do to get saved and remember that's the key here he said uh, uh, towards the end of the prophecy he says but everyone who calls on the name of the lord will be saved and 3000 people at that point they called on the name of the lord and were added into church the first church in a, in other words i i I'd, i'd like to imagine this one in the midst of fear in the midst of anxiety in the midst of seclusion in the midst of uh, uncertainty and confusion and wonder and amazement god gave birth to his church to come out into public no longer in seclusion he said now you've been secluded but now i'm pouring out my spirit upon you so you will no longer remain in seclusion you will no longer remain shut down behind the closed doors you will no longer remain uh, uh, in in fear and uh, and anxiety because i have some purpose for you i want you to be come out as bold as a lion like peter did so that in under those circumstances god launched his church the foundations have been laid when jesus christ uh, died on the cross and he rose again but the launching part i'm talking about he launched out the mission he began to go out from that point on amen Oh dear friends I am so excited about this uh, 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 this design and the the way God chose this opportunity uh, uh, to relieve release himself you know I, I, here is one thing I'm seeing he he gathered all the world to one place and here the the group of believers were in seclusion and they came out boldly to proclaim the gospel and they went out right so i am seeing something here that god is uh, uh, is doing in in the world today well the world went into seclusion in one sense the church went into seclusion right went into hiding behind uh, behind closed doors oh but now god wants to i believe in one way he's going to relaunch his church empower his body of believers who are afraid for one reason or the other now god is going to release his spirit upon them in a fresh way that's what many people are praying towards this pentecost sunday there have been prayers online prayers and the uh, uh, fasted and uh, uh, a lot of people have been for the last 10 days every day they were praying that god would do something upon the world during this pandemic so that the church will once again come out boldly amen it will come out and have a more much powerful witness like like never before Oh I tell you God is already already at work and I just I'm excited about this one. But these are few principles that I see in this passage. What are those principles here? The early Christians had no idea what Jesus meant when he commanded them saying, "Don't leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift as you promised." So there was a command there. They it was a command of God. that Jesus told them to go and wait over here uh, and then uh, and then anticipate and look forward for that so they went into a room and out of fear and i said to in the earlier they shut themselves inside and waiting for the fulfillment of god's promise as god promised the holy spirit came upon them now along with that they were empowered 
They've lost their fear, became bold, and it says the, they went around in Book of Acts, as you read, they went around and turned the world upside down with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. So let me bring this to our context today. This is, as I'm sensing, this is what the Lord is going to uh, uh, do, is going to be doing upon, among us right now. This COVID-19 that, that, that uh, we've been shut in, uh, in, in, um, in, in our homes, and we are, we are afraid, we are anxious about our future. And, uh, but I think, uh, um, my, my, uh, for some reason, we, we, we prayed for uh, coronavirus to come to an end, this pandemic to come to an end. For some reason, we haven't seen that happening as yet. I don't know why. But we still keep praying, Lord, please hold this plague back. But for some reason, uh, God is maybe allowing this to, uh, to continue so that he may refine his body of believers. He may refine our faith. He may uh, 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 energize once again uh, so that we would be uh, uh, on fire for Christ. I'm envisioning, uh, as we are already going forward into future, the, our, our ministry, the ministry of church worldwide is going to be different. It's not going to be as, as business as, as usual. Not, uh, when I say business as usual, what do we do? We, want, we think about potlucks and we think about picnics, we think about barbecues. No, no, okay, that might be the case. That we might have those things. But things are going to change drastically. Things are, are already changing. And uh, so we need to be prepared for the, the times that are ahead of us as, a, as Hope Church, as I speak to our members as well. Uh, um, we cannot do uh, the church in the same old-fashioned way. I pray that it's like uh, uh, we need new wine in a new Wine skin. What do I mean by that? I mean we need new strategies to this new normal that we will be getting into. We'll talk about that as we go in, what that might be like. We need new strategies, innovative thinking. We need to um, uh, understand how we can reach out to those who are locked in, in their homes. Uh, how do we uh, empower the young people uh, of our generation? And I'm praying, and we are praying as elders, that uh, every member of Hope Church uh, and uh, Hope Church's friends, uh, uh, colleagues, uh, that the Holy Spirit will empower them. And they will go out and make Jesus known to their friends uh, and colleagues and neighbors. I'm excited about the new opportunity for us to do live streaming like the way we are doing now. Uh, this, will, this will continue as we go forward. And, uh, and God is going to use our media ministry, uh, Ron and uh, Cyril and uh, Joe, and uh, we have a media team uh, in innovative ways that we're going, to use, we're going to be used of God as we go forward. And uh, we, uh, what is the reason for all that? What the, the, is, uh, why we want to go out? Because it says, uh, as Peter said, all those who will call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Oh dear friends, people are out there, many do not know Christ, they need hope, they need salvation, uh, only Jesus can save them. And uh, 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 Jesus is our, uh, the Lord and Savior, so that's the message that we want to uh, uh, bring out to the world around us. And I'm praying for much more, thing, many more things to happen. But the question for us as we close, we need to ask ourselves is that, are we ready to receive God's outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon our lives? When the Holy Spirit comes upon us, you cannot contain it by, for yourselves. You cannot. You know, the other, yesterday I was reading, a, I was listening to a webinar of um, uh, Make Jesus Known. Uh, I was so stirred up in my spirit as we listened to uh, a high school graduate. 17-year-old uh, girl, she was challenging all those who are uh, practicing webinar. This is what she said. 
if you truly believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, you cannot help but tell others about him. So, do you really believe that Jesus can save the world? If you do, don't keep it to yourself. You got to go out and tell others. We, 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 we want to go out and tell others, but sometimes we are timid and we are afraid. Just like these uh, early disciples, they were timid and they were afraid. And they were powerless until the Holy Spirit came upon them. But once the Holy Spirit come upon them, it's no longer them who are speaking the words. It is God's words as he enables. It says that as the Spirit of God enabled them, they spoke in other languages. Remember? That's what it said. So the Lord will give us words. Amen? The Lord will give us opportunities as we seek his face, as we ask the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us. Oh, dear friends, I am praying today for a personal revival in my life. I am praying for revival in the lives of our members here and the Hope Church. And I'm asking the Lord, God, fill me, break me, mold me, Lord, and use me for your glory. Oh, that's what we are looking for. Now, how earnest are you today to receive the gift the Father has promised for all his children? Get ready, church. The revival is going to come upon us as we ready, as we seek the Holy Spirit pouring down upon us. I want us to close our eyes for a moment. Wherever you are, you're going to ask the Lord to fill you by his spirit it doesn't take much all it takes you is say God here I am fill me and wherever you are in your room or you're on out there walking but the spirit of God can fall upon you and change your life so dear father come right now fill your people as you promised you said I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh Oh, our young people will have your visions. Our old people will, will dream of your dreams. Our men and women will go out and prophesy. Oh God, come, fill us. Fill me and fill our Hope Church members and family and friends who are watching today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. God, God bless you. I want us to join together now as we sing the very familiar song it's called shout to the north and the west it is the work of the church to go out and to proclaim the name of jesus so let's join north men of faith rise up and sing of the great and glorious king you are strong when you feel weak In your brokenness complete Shout to the north and the south Sing to the east and the west Jesus is Savior to all Lord of heaven and earth Rise up women of the truth Stand and sing to broken hearts You can know the healing power Of your awesome King of love Oh, shout to the north and the south Sing to the east and the west Jesus is Savior to all Lord of heaven and earth We've been through fire Find by the power of his name we fall in deeper in love with you you burn the truth on our lips oh lord shout to the north and the south sing to the east and the west jesus is savior to all lord of heaven and earth rise up church with broken wings hallelujah fill this place with songs again of our God who reigns on high by his grace again we apply to the north and the 
Lord, yes, as we sang that song, Lord, uh, we will rise up again, even if it means on broken wings, Lord, we will fly, uh, and we are filled with the Holy Spirit today, Lord, and that you will give us opportunities, even as we move today, Lord God, and as we connect with one another, oh, may we uh, sense your presence. And you give us the boldness, Lord God, to pick up the phone and call that friend. Or maybe send a text or send an email or just to inquire and uh, how they're doing, Lord. And through that, Lord, you will open up a door for them to come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So, Lord, once again, we thank you and we praise you. Lord, we give you all the glory and honor, even as we go in different ways, Lord. May your spirit continue to uh, lead us and guide us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The love of the Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the abiding fellowship of the Holy Spirit will be with us forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Join us at uh, uh, Zoom Social at 11.30. And uh, next Sunday, I will not be uh, uh, available. I'm, I'm uh, taking a little break. Uh, but we have uh, uh, Pat and uh, John will bring forth again the live stream. So don't forget to tune uh, next uh, Sunday as well. God bless you all.